Today I am coming in with another unboxing for you. Recently I picked up the new Vortex Mini Air Fryer from the Instant Brands Company. I'm excited to get it unboxed and see what it looks like. I have been using um, the regular sized Vortex Instant Brands Air Fryer for quite a while now, so I pulled that out so I could show you the size difference and like the difference in features and all that. I did pick up the red version. They actually have, I think, four different colors that you can choose from. Uh, light blue, which looked really cute. I probably would have picked that one if it had been available when I first purchased this. I didn't know they were gonna come out with all the colors. So there's a light blue, a white, a black, and a red. I'll spin the box here real quick so you can see all that they have on here. Nothing too exciting. They do have handles so you can carry it easily. It's very light because it is very small, a little crispy. All right, let's go ahead and get this open. On the inside here, it has all the stuff that's in the box, so you can make sure you're not missing anything. Paperwork on top, of course, the manual, getting started guide. Here's the little cooking tray that goes in the bottom of the drawer. This is very similar to the little tray that's in the other Vortex, although it looks like they have changed the little silicone uh, gripper things here, and the ones on the other Vortex are not great. I have not liked them at all, so I'm hoping that these will be better. It looks like they are a lot better. Okay, here is the machine. Oh, it is so cute. I was expecting the finish to be um, really glossy, but it's actually a, a matte finish on the red. All right, there's the drawer, and then this goes down into here. Let's see, I guess in the bigger vortex it only fits one way. In this one, it looks like it can fit anyway, and it's pretty tight. It goes in there pretty tight. So a lot of air fryers will have a removable basket where it's like this tray, but it has the sides and it is connected to the handle, so it the whole basket removes out of the drawer. Uh, but Instant Pot has done a little, done it a little bit differently, and there are things I like about that and things that I don't like about it. The things I like about it is it gives you more room because you don't have another basket inside the drawer, you can go all the way to the edge of the drawer. Uh, the things I don't like about it is if you have this filled with maybe french fries or something, you can't just dump them out into a um, basket or something or a bowl because all the oil that's down at the bottom is gonna dump with it. When you're able to remove the basket and dump it from the basket, um, you, you leave all the oil in the bottom of the, the drawer. So there, it's you know give and take. So that is what the adorable little drawer looks like. Now let me pull out my bigger Vortex and just give you a size comparison. So there are the two side by side. You can see it's maybe an inch and a half. The big one's an inch and a half to two inches taller on the tallest point. Although this one has the slanted top and this one is flat on top. From the top side view, you can see um, the footprint of the mini is much smaller than the bigger one. And just one more visual comparison of the size of the baskets. You can see the bigger one is going to hold probably double the amount of the smaller one. So now I'm going to get this plugged in and do the initial test run that they have in here. They want you to um, have it run on air fry for 20 minutes before you actually cook anything in it. I assume that is to burn off any chemicals or whatever. And of course it says down here, the first few times you use your air fryer, you may notice a strong plastic smell. This is normal, non-toxic and goes away. So I'm gonna get this plugged in. Here is a view of the top with all the buttons lit up. So I am going to choose air fry. It's at 400 degrees. And for the time, I'm gonna go up to 20 minutes and then start and this air fryer uh, as well as the larger vortex has a preheat some air fryers don't they just go right into the cooking time so that's just something to keep in mind when you're working with recipes I typically don't worry about it I just go ahead and put my food in 
and just start it and the preheat time just gets added on to the cooking time. It's very, very quiet. It is quieter than my larger Vortex. At least that's what I'm noticing so far. Here's a quick view of what it looks like while it's cooking. It just goes back and forth between the cook time and the temperature that you have it set at. And you can adjust the time and the temperature while it's cooking. You would just press the time button or the temperature button and then use the knob to, um, to change it. And I think you press the knob to lock it in. Let me, let me see. Went up to 17 minutes. Yeah, press the knob and then that locks in the new time that you chose. While the air fryer is still doing its initial test run, I wanted to talk about the different uh, programs that it has. Um, so this model has air fry, roast, bake, and reheat. And an important thing to know about all of these is they cook exactly the same. <laughs> they heat to a temperature, they use the fan um, to disperse the heat, and that's what gives it the air fry effect. Uh, but they just have to make it complicated and call them different things. Um, so I'll go over, there's some slight differences with the different programs, uh, but they're pretty minimal. So you can see over here on air fry, roast, and bake, the temperature range, is, they're all the same from 180 to 400. And so you can manually adjust whatever temperature you want. So if you hit bake, and you go to 400 degrees, it's gonna cook exactly the same way as if you hit air fry and go to 400 degrees. The only setting that is different is the reheat that you can go down all the way to 120 degrees and only go up to 360 degrees. I'm talking in Fahrenheit because I'm in the US, but of course they give you the Celsius uh, equivalents as well. And then they each have a default temperature, so if you just hit the button, it'll default to 400 for air fry, 380 for roast, uh, 330 for bake, and 280 for reheat. But like I said, those are all adjustable, so you can adjust them to any temperature. And then they also have a default time that they go to, but again, that is adjustable, and you can adjust any of them from one minute up to one hour. Then the last thing that makes um, these programs a little bit different from each other is on the air fry and the roast setting, it will give you a reminder to turn or toss your food um, about three quarters of the way through cook time. So it'll beep and it'll tell you to turn food. It'll have a little um, display on here that says turn food. So like it says here, not applicable to bake or reheat. So if you don't want to have that reminder, uh, to turn your food, you can just choose the bake setting, or if you're reheating, of course, choose reheat. And then also up here, there's the add food after it does its preheat. It says not applicable to the reheat setting because when you have it on the reheat setting, it doesn't do the same preheat. It just starts with the um, cook time or the reheat time automatically. One more thing about the cooking programs is that, like I said, they have a default time and a default temperature but those will only be the default the first time you use it. After you use it one time, it will remember what you chose, and when you go to start that program again, it will um, do the same that you chose for the last time. So that's one way that you can use like air fry and roast. Even though they're exactly the same cooking program, you can, um, if you, you know, always cook potatoes a certain way and you always cook uh, you know, bacon a certain way, you can have those set up as your default um, potatoes and bacon and so you hit air fry to cook your potatoes, you hit roast to cook your bacon and it remembers the time and temperature that you used. That's really the only way that those um, cooking programs are very helpful in my opinion. I also just noticed this in the manual that you can reset the smart program to the factory settings. Um, if you want to do that, you can hold the button down for three seconds and the cook time um, and temperature uh, reverts back to the default settings. Um, and apparently you can reset all the smart programs by, let's see, press and hold the dial for three seconds. And then the, all the smart programs will um, go back to the factory settings. So this is what it looks like when they are telling you to turn your food, turn or toss. And then it goes back to the cooking time. If you just ignore it, it'll go back to the cooking time. A couple other helpful things to know is that you can toggle between Celsius and Fahrenheit depending on your preference. 
Um, so that's nice. You just, uh, let's see, in standby mode, touch and hold the temperature key for five seconds and it'll toggle between Celsius and Fahrenheit. Also, you can turn on or off the sound, which comes in handy sometimes. I typically keep the sound on because I want to know when it ends <laughs> and so I can come get it quickly because um, if you leave it in there after it ends for a long time, the steam will build up and it'll it won't be as crispy oftentimes so but if the uh, sound annoys you you can totally turn that off you can see that when it gets to one minute it starts counting down by seconds but that's only for the last minute of cooking time all right my 20 minutes are up and I can go ahead and open this and I was gonna do a little test run here with some food I have some bacon um, I knew that the full slice of bacon wouldn't fit into the tiny little uh, basket so I cut them in half but I thought that might give you guys a good visual of like how much will fit in this basket. It is pretty tiny. I think so two of these equals one slice of bacon. I think I'll be able to fit two slices of bacon in here total because you don't want them to be you know stacked on top of each other that would not work too well. So there we go. Two slices of bacon fit in this air fryer. I forget the amount of time I usually cook bacon in an air fryer. Uh, let's see, I want to hit time, go down to, I think it's around eight minutes and I'll check it at some point, make sure it doesn't burn. It's already preheated. That's why it just jumped to add food. It didn't have a preheating time because I had already preheated it with my test run. There's three minutes left, and I'm just gonna check it real quick. Oh, they're getting pretty crispy there, but um, they could go for another couple minutes at least. So another quick size comparison with the uh, Vortex. Here's a visual of how much bacon fits into the larger Vortex basket. Got five whole strips in here compared to the two strips in the mini. All right, all done very crispy just how we like it the next thing i'm going to try is some french fries this is just one medium-sized potato it is about eight ounces and that's about as much as i want to put in here because you really don't want them to be stacked on each other very much you want them to have a lot of airflow around them that's what gets them crispy so i wouldn't put more than than eight ounces of potatoes in this little air fryer at a time I'm not going to use any oil, although I just cooked the bacon in there, so there is a little bit of oil in there. Um, a little bit of oil goes a long way in an air fryer, so I think it'll be just fine. For cook time, I'm going to just start with 12 minutes, and then we'll see where we're at at that point. Still preheated from cooking the bacon, so no preheat time. It's been going for eight minutes. I'm going to go ahead and shake it. Oh, they're starting to look a little bit brown. That's good. Kind of stuck together though. Cook time finished. They're looking pretty good. I'd probably let them go another few minutes just to get them extra crispy. Probably, let's see, we did 12 minutes. I'll probably add five more minutes to make 17 minutes total. All right, I'll finish. Those are looking pretty good. Very crispy. Now to add a little bit of salt and then these are ready. So you can see that this Air fryer is gonna be great for if you're cooking single servings of things, maybe two servings if you know, the people eat light <laughs> um, or depending on what it is you're cooking, but you're not gonna get a lot more than one good size serving in this tiny air fryer. You could probably fit three to four chicken legs in here just to give you an idea, maybe two chicken thighs at a time, uh, maybe one large uh, burger patty, maybe a couple smaller sausage patties, like maybe two to four, if they're you know small sausage patties you could fit in there. So hopefully that gives you a good idea of um, the amount that you could cook in here at a time. It is pretty minimal, but if you're cooking just for yourself, if you have a small space, uh, like an RV or a dorm room, this might be just 
the perfect accessory for your kitchen. All right, that is it for my unboxing and initial test run of this adorable new air fryer from the Instant Brands Company. Hope you guys enjoyed the video and I will see you again real soon.